everybody, it's Angel from Halo Inspirations. We give you inspirations to help you spread beauty and joy through your quilting journey. Happy hump day, happy Wednesday. Oh, I've been so excited about today. I can't even tell you, I know I say it all the time, but I'm really excited, okay? Um, because the fun really starts next week. And I've been alluding to that. What are we doing in July? Well, I wanna say everybody does Christmas in July, right? I didn't want to get on the bandwagon. I want to do something a little different. Um, so I'm doing what we're calling the 12 days of quilting. And instead of the 12 days of Christmas, get it, right? <laughs> anyway, so we're doing the 12 days of quilting starting on July 7th, which is a week from today, 2021. Um, I will drop a video every day for 12 days. I will be on Facebook Live every day for 12 days in response to those videos um, with some quilting. So what exactly does that mean? Well, okay, here is the plan of action starting next Wednesday. I am going to offer four different motifs. No, cancel that. <laughs> four different ways to quilt your quilt. So we'll have walking foot quilting, we'll have stencil quilting, we'll have free motion quilting, and we'll have ruler work. And within each method, there will be three motifs for you to digest and see how it works. And I will say all the stencils I use and all the rulers I use, you, if you're intrigued and you really wanna be able to do some of those things, they're in our shop but I'll talk about that each week. What's important is to know that I'm going through each different way, depending on where you are and what you wanna do. Now, all these things are beginner level. Um, and next year I'll offer a little bit more or something different. I wanna do this again next year. I think this is very inspirational. Even if you don't do exactly what I do, it may inspire you to do something else. That is key, right? So we do have all of those things. And now I don't have my free motion foot. Why? Because it's actually loaded right now. And I'll tell you why it's loaded. So we are doing the 12 days of quilting starting next week, 12 days in a row, all different types of motifs in four different methods to get it done. Now I'm going to switch them up. I'm not doing walking foot all at once for, you know, three days and then turn around and do ruler work for three days. I'm going to kind of spread them out so we don't get bored, right? <laughs> I don't want y'all to get bored. So, um, and you know, you might be intrigued, but I don't have, and I'll show you an example when I go to do free motion quilting at the first one, but I have my free motion foot loaded because today I'm giving something extra. I want to tackle the challenge of tension. Um, it's huge. It's absolutely huge. And I know a lot of people, I was one of them, gets confused. And so I wanted to do a little demonstration on what to look for and what to do when you see what you see. Okay. So, um, yeah, we're going to, I'm going to pull you in close. I'm going to show you how I check tension. Now I want to say before I dive in, I am going to show you that I do loops, jig jags, and straight lines. I do that every time I'm going to quilt because you never know. If you are seeing something, your first line of defense, rethread your top thread, rethread your bobbin, Make sure it's threaded correctly. Make sure it's not going in the wrong direction. Make sure your needle is fresh. Maybe it needs changed. Maybe your needle's not loaded correctly. It could be backwards. It could be sideways, right? Those things you want to look at first because if you start making adjustments and something's not right, it'll just drive you crazy. Rethread, rethread, check the needle, and maybe you might even need to do a quick cleaning. I did it during the video. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> you want to make sure that those things are done first. That is your first line of defense intention. When you know everything is good to go and you're still having challenges or imperfections, that's when you start to look. I want to also add that I'm doing this on my domestic. I'm only adjusting top tension. I do understand that some machines have the ability to adjust their bobbin tension. And I do that on my long arm. For me, that is a separate conversation I will love to have with you in the future. But today, my machine personally, and I'm sure a lot of yours too, you can't even adjust it. It's a plastic piece of bobbin, right? There's no adjusting. That's it, right? There's no buttons to push. There's nothing. It's just my top tension. So that's where I'm going. So everything we talk about today, when I'm making adjustments, it's all about the top of the machine, not the bobbin. So let's go ahead and get this tension under control. So when we get to free motion quilting and ruler work, that will have already underneath your belt. So let's go ahead and get this started. See y'all soon. So you've seen I've done a little bit of stitching. Um, I did this video once, <laughs> but I was having issues. Um, so I did a little cleanup. I cleaned out my bobbin and just to show you, that's the amount of lint that I was able to catch, ca capture along with some pieces of thread. I know that doesn't seem like a lot, but it can actually mess a lot with, well, with your tension, okay? So I uh, cleaned out that. I already replaced my needle and I re-threaded because I changed colors because my machine hates me stitching with black. It just is what it is. It's one of those finicky things. So I've changed it to white and I got a darker one. Now I'll share with you what I did before um, when we go to analyze this a little bit um, because I think it's important to show you, you know, what I go through or what people go through when you're figuring out what your tension is. So the first thing I will tell you, every machine is different and my tension goes from one to 20 it likes 11. Now your machine may go one through 10. Every machine is different, right? And so when you find your home for your normal quilting, and I say that because I'm using 100% cotton along with 100% batting, uh, 11 is where my machine likes to live with 80, 20 and 100% batting and 100% cotton, okay? Uh, fabric. It changes with batiks and other types of batting. So when you learn your machine, you'll learn what your norm is. So what I've done for this first row, I've just made sure everything was looking okay. I'm still fussing with speed. That's on me, not my tension of my machine. So I've hiked it up. I'm going to have high tension knowing that I live normally in 11. I increased it to 16. Um, so that's five, five points up. I hope I don't break threads. I don't think I will, but you know, it is what it is. So I do this every single time I go to quilt. I need to know where my machine is for the day. Sometimes I think I need a good cleaning. I think I need to have some maintenance done on it. Um, so there are so many variables that can happen. So every time I sit down to quilt, I test tension. You don't need very much fabric to do it. You can have just a little strip off the side of your quilt. I do it on my long arm too. Same concept, different position. All right, so I've already started stitching uh, for you know making sure I was good to go for the video. So now I've hiked it up to 16. So when I check tension, I like to do the telephone cord. So I have some circular motions. I don't, oh, there we go, yep, okay. 
And then I also like to do some jig jaggings, and I'll show you that in just a second. I'm gonna go through some motion here. I can actually increase it a little more. I don't think I'm gonna break threads. But I can see what I want you to see when you're looking for tension. Now, I'm gonna show this closer to you. Yeah, I'm gonna increase it a little bit. Oh boy, I'm up to 18. I'm probably gonna break threads here. I'm gonna do one more swirly here. Yeah, okay, this is good. All right. Whew, got my finger. See that, you gotta be careful. <laughs> Don't do that. I'm just gonna do a straight line. One more swirl. Okay, so that is high tension. Now, like I said, I'll bring you in closer. I'm just gonna put an H over here. Now I'm only messing with the top tension. I'm not, on my domestic, I can't mess with the bottom tension. So, um, and I don't encourage it. Um, To a certain degree that's a whole nother topic we're just talking about top tension and what to look for with tension issues so i've marked this high i'm actually going to lift my presser actually i'm going to turn my machine off eventually here no i'm going to do it now so <clears throat> and turn it off just because i'm having some issues i think i need some maintenance i just want it to be clear i will tell you if you're if your presser foot is down, your tension discs are engaged. So if you want to change your tension, make sure that your presser foot is up. So that was high tension. I'm going to lower it to low tension. I'm going to go, whoops, I don't know why I did that. I'm going to go to a four. Normally I'm at 11, so that's seven points dropping. So I'm just gonna travel a little bit. I wanna make sure I'm clearing that screen. And I'm gonna do some more swirlies. Whoa, that's a terrible one. You know, the thing about testing your tension, it also gives you an opportunity to work on your speed and, and making sure that you're adjusting the right speed to get the length of stitches that you want and feeling like you're at home. I just want to make sure that it's doing what I want it to do and it's not. So I'm going to go a little bit lower. Wow. See, I'm telling you guys, I got some stuff going on here. I'm going to go to two. doing a couple of swirls I'm gonna do some jig jags I'm gonna make a skinny one yeah that's much better okay wow yeah my machine I really do think it needs service because it's not acting normal you'll learn it so I did some of those. I'm gonna do a couple more swirls, or loops, not swirls, loops. And I'll go ahead and do a straight line. All right, so that is the low. So I'm just gonna draw a little thing here so we know when we go to analyze this. I'm going to go back. I'm going to lift my presser foot. I'm gonna turn off my machine because like I told y'all, I think I'm dealing with some maintenance stuff. You don't have to normally do that. Normally you just lift your presser foot. And I'm gonna go to where I think is home. 
what is my norm. And there's one more thing I'm gonna try and do. It's kind of hard for me, but I'm gonna go through here now. Like I said, I like bigger stitches. Not bad. I might have to adjust my tension. Now this is where I normally live is 11. I do have a fresh needle. I have re-threaded. Cleaned out my bobbin. I've done all the things that can affect tension. Now that doesn't mean that I don't need to do it again. Sometimes you re-thread and it needs to happen again. Um, now here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to attempt to go fast. Okay, so when you drive a car, sometimes when you wanna get around a bend, you hit the gas a little harder, right? And it helps get the momentum to go around the turn. Um, I'm going to do that. You don't want to do that when you're quilting. You want to try and keep it consistent. But if you go really fast around a corner, I'm hoping it'll show you on the back side what exactly I've done. Let's take a peek real quick. And it didn't. <laughs> I'm not doing it fast enough. Oh. Just made my stitches bigger. <laughs> it's hard. Let me see. <laughs> it didn't do it. <laughs> oh, I'll talk about it here in a minute. But let's go ahead. Let me go ahead and finish this up. And I'm actually really liking 11. So my machine is doing really good. Okay. So I'm going to. Oh, one of the things, when you go to break thread, here's a little trick of the trade. So when you start, you've seen me in the past pull up threads when I first start by lowering the needle with the presser foot down and then um, push, you know, allowing the needle to uh, come back up and I can pull on the thread. Well, what I do when I want to cut threads, I go ahead and lift my needle, lift my presser foot, pull. You have to have your presser foot up. Let me show you what happens when you don't. If you don't have it up, it won't, it won't go. There's no, there's tension engaged, right? So it's not letting me pull anything. So you want to make sure your presser foot is up. You extend yourself beyond, go ahead and lower your presser foot and cut threads. Let me show you what happens. What that does, is it gives you um, some space here with a long tail. And then I don't have here. Let's see if I can do it with this. All right. You'll have a little loop. Making sure you're still in the camera. You'll have, well, maybe this is better because I have it locked. Okay. So it'll give you a little loop and then you can pull on that loop and it'll also give you a long tail for your bottom thread. Okay, so I have my bottom and my top. I can then simply tie a knot here and bury threads. So just a little trick, but let's analyze some of this and I will see you in just a sec. So now you've seen where I take every time I'm going to quilt, I check my tension with loops, jig jags, and straight lines, okay? I wanna take a second and talk about tension. So you have the top tension on the top, right? Your needle goes down, it's got tension on the thread, and it goes down into the bobbin, it grabs, the bottom thread pulls it up and they lock. They're, they're locked together. The idea is that they lock in where the batting is, in between the two layers of fabric. Because if it's too high, you'll see one thing. If it's pulling too much from the top, you'll see eyelashes on the top 
or railroad tracks or um, your your stitching will be just kind of there if it's pulling if it's not enough on the top that means the bobbin side is going to win in the tug of war it'll win and so you'll see the eyelashes on the bottom if your top tension is too low now this can be so confusing and listen i can just vividly remember how much this was something when i very started when I very first started to learn how to free motion quilt this was one of those things I YouTubed to death because I never felt like I was getting an, uh, a good explanation I did find something um, at one point and I wish I could um, remember who it was or when it was or where I found it because I would so link it because it was so amazing it like the light bulb moment went off and I saved that video so every because I could remember is it top 10 is it too high too low do I need to increase do I need to decrease it's huge in understanding it when you're new because there's a lot going on but it is that tug of war that we're trying to find that really nice balance so that we don't see anything on the top we don't see anything in the bottom our stitches are defined and they're nice and the only issue is the quilter it's not the machine okay so you saw me stitch so now i want to take you in and show you the example of what we've done so that you know what to look for and what it is that you're trying to see and i've ended up doing it twice and i talk about that um my machine hates black thread <laughs> okay so and i thought it was having some issues i talk about it later so we're just going to dig in you've watched me stitch so now let's go close up i'm really close up for you guys because i want you to see exactly what to look for this was huge moment in my quilting experience trying to figure out do i increase do i decrease do i increase do i decrease i it, it's just it, it can be so confusing, but you know what? It's okay to be confused because that means you're learning and together we can do this. So let's dive in to the close-ups. See you there in just a sec. Okay, so I've got you in here really close, like I promised. So where are we at here? Okay, these are my good tension. If you look at it on top, looks pretty good. When I flip it over, it also looks really nice, except for that, but that's me. That's not the tension, okay? These are nice stitches, very equal. There's depth where the stitch goes down and it's interlocking in the batting and not on the bottom and not on the top, okay? Now, low tension. Low tension on the top. So here is... Um, the low tension and I had to make it lower if you remember now I don't know how well you'll be able to see this but these stitches they're just kind of laying on top like they can be moved this one's really obvious I'm gonna pull this oh you can see that see how it's like loosey-goosey ah, look at that they're all like that okay so this is low tension on the top now let's flip this over okay this is the story of all stories this is what i really wanted y'all to be able to see these little things are called eyelashes i always wondered what eyelashes were <laughs> here's eyelashes so this is when the tension is low on the bottom okay and this this is the straight way look at that it's just kind of laying here look at that isn't that crazy okay and then we go into normalcy but this is what i really eyelashes are what we call these they look like little eyelashes coming off of eyeballs and if you'll notice i have some eyelashes at my points okay and this is kind of this is really just laying here um, 
they're really just laying here too and we have some what they call railroad tracks everything's just kind of laying on top there's no definition like i said it looked decent on the top but it was the bottom where we saw the issues now we're going to go to high tension okay now you can see everything there's no definition in these stitches everything is just uh, here's an eyelash because you what what you will see is some eyelashes i don't have any eyelashes because i didn't hike it up high enough but i have another thing to show you now here's some eyelashes now if you are just having issues and i tried to do it up here i wasn't very successful but if you just had eyelashes on your turns, sometimes it's not tension. Sometimes that's you moving too fast, like I talked about. But when you have stitch issues in other places, that's when you are understanding that it's not just your tension. I mean, your stitching, how speed. If you have issues everywhere, that's an indication of tension. Now with high tension, You'll get eyelashes on the top where things are just laying there without definition and you need to lower the top tension. When you have eyelashes on the back and in your straight lines and, and your points and things aren't defined, this is low tension when it's on the back of the fabric and that means you need to increase it. Now I want to show you, I actually, I told you I did it twice, okay? So my machine hates black. <laughs> so here was my high tension on top. Look at those eyelashes. And I've got railroad tracks here, those little slits that you see. It's like a railroad track. I've got the eyelash. It's not just in the turn. It's everywhere. Okay. So I need to, I need to lower it. Oh, and even on the points, you can see my eyelashes. This looks terrible, right? So this is my high tension on the top. Here's my low tension. It doesn't look too bad. You don't need to get too picky. I do have some issues, um, but it's not. It's not. It's not like this, guys. <laughs> and when we flip, when we flip this over, so this is a top side of low tension. Let's flip it over. Look at this. Look at this crazy absolutely you can definitely it's everywhere look at this straight line it's everywhere on um, the fabric now I cleaned out my bobbin because I felt like I was still having issues this is me trying to find the normalcy um, my machine hates black so what does that mean that means I would have to really sit down and, and um, work with it it's not incredibly horrible, but it's not, it, I can't get the spacing right. It felt like it was laying around. Um, I have a little bit of eyelashing. It's not bad. It's just, oh, black is not my friend. Black is not my friend. And I wanted to show you that because it looks much different, right? It looks, now that's me trying to speed up. Instead of me making eyelashes, <laughs> it just widened my it just widened the stitch <laughs> I was trying though but um, these stitches look a heck of a lot better than the black does and it's just it is what it is I cleaned out my machine I did all those things but I wanted to show you so if you have eyelashes and railroad tracks and stitches laying around on the back on the back side that means your tension is too low, okay? And you need to increase it. If you're seeing eyelashes or non-definition on the top, that means, because it looks really good on the back, that means your tension is too high and you need to decrease it. I mean, look, so you can see them right here. There's my eyelashes. Not too many. My machine really likes white and gray thread. So, um, that's the close-up. That's the analyzing. Let me come back at you. Okay, so that is the gist on tension. And I just want to add something a little bit more. So when you have low tension on the top, 
and you saw the eyelashes on the underside of the quilt, on your bottom, on your backing, that's because that tug of war, the bobbin thread is winning. So it's pulling the top thread really hard and it's showing on the back side. If you're seeing the railroad tracks or eyelashes or non-definition on the top and your tension is too high, that's because it's pulling that bobbin thread on top of your topper and that's why you're seeing it. So I, I just wanted to add that because this is, I'm telling you guys, for me, this was something I, I really had to learn and I had to constantly um, research and when I found that one video, gosh, I wish I could find it and I, I tried, I looked um, because um, it was just that light bulb moment and as you progress and as you do this more and as you deal with tension and uh, really looking for those um, challenges, you'll get more comfortable with it and it'll become second nature. But when you're first starting, I, I just can remember so vividly how frustrating, do I increase, do I decrease? I'd be up till midnight looking at different YouTube videos, trying to find what it was that would help me really understand it. So I get it, I really do. But that's tension. And I hope that is helpful. I will be on Facebook Live today at 3 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. I am wide open for any questions. You can drop them down below in the comment section also. You can send me an email. Um, I've been there. I have so been as a beginner. If you're a beginner, I've been where you are. And I totally appreciate it and I totally understand it. And it's really not complicated. It's just new. And when something is new, um, we kind of, I don't know about y'all guys. I don't know if you do this. Uh, if you're anything like me, I, I can walk myself in circles. <laughs> so, <laughs> at any rate, I hope this was helpful. I'll be today at 3 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Again, we start the 12 days of quilting starting on next Wednesday, the 7th of July, 2021. It'll be a 12 day in a row series. It will be a lot of fun. So I look forward to it. I hope you look forward to it. In the meantime, you now have tension. You have something to refer to and get comfortable with. And even when you think everything is perfect, oh, like my black thread, right? Every time you might think everything is perfect, something may go awry in, you know, um, you just got to keep going and understand that it will get easier. I promise. I promise you it will get easier and we can do this together. I believe in you always will. I'll stand behind you and cheer all day long. Go you cause you're getting it done. So if you have any questions again, drop them down below. See you at 3 PM Eastern daylight time. And until next time, May y'all continue to be inspired, productive, ever so joyful, never stop believing, and never stop making your dreams in quilting come true. Happy Wednesday. Happy hump day. See y'all soon and happy quilting. Love ya.